YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back with week one NFL power rankings. Every single week, I'll rank every NFL team from 32 to one. It'll always be based off team performances. It's not your lame, boring, end of the year prediction type power rankings where nothing changes. Let's get into the countdown for week one. Coming in at 32, the New England Patriots. If Drake May was starting, I would have them better than this, better ranked. I think he gives him a better chance than Jacoby Brissett. At the same time, I don't mind sitting him. He's It's all about upside when it comes to May, and that offense just really isn't ready yet, and that's a big reason why they're 32, especially with Jacoby Brissett in there. That offense might be brutal. What can keep them from being at the bottom of the defense, I think could still win them some football games. It's still pretty solid even without Judon. 31, the Carolina Panthers. I love the Dave Canales hire. I think he's going to do good things. I think he's going to help Bryce Young. This offense, they've made good additions on, on offense. Again, I think Bryce Young will be better. I think it's a work in progress, though. I, I think it's a team that can climb these power rankings as the year goes on. But right now, still a work in progress. At the same time, making the offense better, like in the act of that. And the defense took a little bit of a hit. Still not overly worried about it, but again, today, another reason they're starting at 31. Today, they're scrambling for corners. DJ Wanham, a starting pass rusher, going to be out to start the year. So I think it's a team that could really grow and climb as the year goes on. This is where they're going to start. 30, the New York Giants, a tough one because a lot of it is on Daniel Jones. Not a ton of faith in him right now, taking care of the football, you know, staying healthy staying protected even though the offensive line should be better than it was last year but if he plays uh, you know even a little bit better than expected and people expect they could be ranked a lot higher in this but right now you know no Saquon it feels like the offense really has to run through neighbors and he'll make explosive plays but he actually might have to carry this offense a little bit it feels like and then defensively I love the D-line they got some stars up there but after that mainly the secondary a little bit of work in progress but it's a tricky team you know if Daniel Jones clicks and plays he kind of gets back on track they can be ranked way better than 30 so another team that could possibly climb 29 the Broncos they can be tricky to deal with early in the year they're gonna be fast physical you know, a lot of dink and dunk. It's just going to be a pain to deal with. Tough game plan, kind of a new look Broncos team. Um, you know, but and they looked really good in preseason, including Bo Nix. But yeah, it's a little regular season could be a little different. But I do think they can start pretty pretty well. Um, you know, maybe just lacking, you know, a lot more talent to be ranked higher. Even though they do have some talent here and there. But interesting team to start the year. The Denver Broncos. Bo Nix looked better than expected in preseason. Twenty eight. The Saints. A little worried about the offensive line. A little worried about Derek Carr. They have some weapons. I mean, not as much as they used to. I think they'll run the ball pretty effectively under Clint Kubiak, but you got to be able to do more than that. Defensively, you know, is it one of those elite Saints defenses? Probably not, but the defense will be very solid like it usually is. Uh, they're going to start at 28. They'll play the Panthers in week one. 27, the Washington Commanders, who could be sneaky because that offense can be tough to deal with, and they could start pretty hot. They have a, they got to come out and win that Buccaneers game because they have that game plan factor on their side. Uh, you know, tough to deal with Daniels for opposing teams. They don't know what to expect from that new offense. And then defensively, you know, Dan Quinn's going to have that defense playing pretty well. So they could be sneaky. But growing pains, young team. How's the edge position going to be? The defensive end position going to be? They're going to start at 27, but it's, I'll say it again. Could be sneaky. 26, the Raiders. Interesting team. All about quarterback play. I don't think Minshew will play as well as he did last year, mainly because of system fit. I thought he fit the, the scheme of Shane Steichen so perfectly. I don't think he'll play quite as well. So maybe that's the issue there, but he does have weapons. The defense played way better than it, how it looked on paper last year, mainly because Max Crosby, I thought, was the best defensive player in football. So do they continue playing better than expected? Tricky team here. 25, uh, going to go with the Cardinals. Another uh, candidate to be sneaky thing we got to remember Kyler Murray is going to be with the team starting week one so that's huge to add Marvin Harrison Jr. they have some weapons they have young guys that should get better still feels like a work in progress team uh, Gannon is a good defensive coach they need edge rushers they were so bad stopping a run this year they added defensive linemen but are they the best option so I don't know how much better they will be stopping to the run they're gonna start at 25 but again another team that could be sneaky the Vikings at 24 there's talent all everywhere on this roster but they've had some injuries, unfortunately. And there's other guys you kind of worry about going down. Hawkinson's not back yet. Uh, Darnold, the question is with the quarterback position. I think we, I, I think so. And I think a lot of people would agree. Sam Darnold is going to have the best year of his career. It's just not saying much based on where he's played, how he's played. And he should have the best year of his career with this offense. They have talent. They have receivers. Uh, you know, it's just getting everything to click with the quarterback position, staying healthy, getting healthy. That's kind of the issue at Minnesota there. 
Uh, we'll see how much they miss Kirk Cousins, even though they were without him for uh, most of the last season anyways. 23, the Colts, another tricky team. Because I think Steichen, Jonathan Taylor, like these guys alone, the system and that powerful running game, the offensive line, and they have weapons. I think that alone can make them better in this. But Anthony Richardson, it feels even more so now, which we kind of already thought that he's still a work in progress. Um, you know, still got to grow. He can have high highs, low lows, and it's going to be a little inconsistent. I think that's okay. It's just hard to rank them because of that right now. They've already had some injuries. Abukum, when will Josh Downs be back? Abukum's out for the year. Um, the, the secondary and the defense I worry about. I do like the D-line, though. Uh, you know, so there's some questions with them. They could be a tough game plan. Richardson, when is he going to be ready to be fully consistent? Tricky team to rank there. They're all they're going to be tough to play every week, though. That's one of those teams. They're going to be tough, like the Raiders. They're going to be tough to play every week. Titans at 22, kind of climbing a little bit. I think they'll be way better than what people think, a little sneaky. The defense seems loaded to me. They, they keep making it better. They, I love the new coaching staff. They have weapons now. They're running back receivers, everything. All it is on is the offense line and Will Levis. Those are important things, but everything else – we know it's going to be solid. If Levis can play okay, which I think he will, offense line's really the only worry, but I think it got better, especially with coaching. Those are the, is what it's on. Like If those produce quarterback offense line, I think they can be even sneakier in this. I think they're going to be climbing as the year goes on. But they're going to start off at 22, an interesting game in week one against the Bears. 21, the Steelers. Worried about quarterback play. I guess it can't be worse than last year, even though Rudolph played pretty decent. Uh, but barely played. Obviously, they wish he put him in earlier. But how will the quarterback play? How will be? How will the offensive line be? Weapons? They have weapons, but it feels like the only ju- like juice they have is George Pickens, and they have other guys, of course. Uh, Arthur Smith. I think he's a little underrated, but at the same time, the offense could be stale with the group of guys they have. De- defensively, I think they'll be solid. I don't think it's going to be one of those elite Mike Tomlin and company defenses, but it should be very solid. They're going to start off at twenty-one. Just sneaky team that could be. It feels a little bland right now. 20, the Chargers, better coaching. They have a great quarterback that could be elite in Justin Herbert. He doesn't have much weapons, but he has a ridiculous offensive line. So, I mean, they could be elevated by the coaching because Herbert hitting his stride, the offensive line, they could be elevated by that. Defensive coaching should be better, but I worry about the interior defensive line, but they have weapons everywhere on that defense. It's really just stopping a run. Another tricky one to rank because you know because of that uh, you know Herbert kind of keeps them up roster wise they're probably lower than some of these other teams the other teams are a little more complete but Herbert kind of pushes them up but maybe they surprise some people nineteen the Buccaneers playoff team last year they won a playoff game as well uh, how will they be without Canales I think losing Canales actually hurts them a bit but they'll still be a competitor for sure they'll be tough to play I think the I like the running back group I think Bucky Irving even as a backup could be sneaky they have receivers. Baker's got to keep balling. Defensively, the edge group will be a question. 18, the Chicago Bears, who could be uh, a team that is tough to deal with, especially early because you yeah, game planning for Caleb Williams, his legs, him, his arm. Uh, you know He can do anything at any given time. There will be hiccups with not just him but the team because they're still young, they're still fresh, but this team is definitely climbing on the rise. The balance can make them tough to game plan for. They should be effective on the ground through the air. The defense looks good. Love the secondary led by Jalen Johnson. If it continues where it left off, they could be a sneaky good team for sure. That game one, that first game, Bears-Titans is an interesting one to me. I think you know both teams, up-and-comers, they're built in similar ways, up-and-coming quarterbacks here. That's, that, that's one of the ones I'm really looking forward to in week one. Our next video will be our picks video. And we got a bunch of in-season content coming, so make sure to join us for that. Turn notifications on and subscribe. Be much appreciated. Number 17, the Seattle Seahawks. Another team I keep labeling sneaky teams. This is another big one. I think the Titans and the Seahawks really stand out when it comes to being surprising, being sneaky. Uh, People are kind of doubting them a little bit right now. Mike McDonald's one of the best defensive coaches in football. They have young, fun talent everywhere. That defense can be better than you think. And then offensively, it's just new, fresh. We're going to see some spread looks. It's going to be they're going to be tough to game plan for. They're going to air the ball out, but they have running backs. They have weapons everywhere. The offense line should be a little bit better. So that, the team's going to be better than people think right there in Seattle. So I got them at 17. On to the top 16. At 16, I got the Jacksonville Jaguars. Another team I think people are maybe down on a little bit too much. I mean, nobody thinks they're bad, but. You know, I think they get back on track, or at least close to it, where they were in the middle of last season. They have weapons. Trevor Lawrence, I believe in him. He's got to play a little bit better, though. 
Um, you know, but I think the defense will be better We're under Ryan Nielsen, uh, looking for some break is an ultimate team with breakout players. So I got them starting at 16, 15, the Browns, a very complete roster. Where will Deshaun Watson be at with his health and with his, you know, I mean, he's healthy right now, but will he stay healthy? Uh, w- which Deshaun Watson's going to show up on the field? No Chubb to start the year. Ford is going to play good enough, obviously. Got to stay healthy with this team defensively. When they're at home, they looked elite. In a way, not so much. They got pretty predictable with too much man coverage. They got to mix it up. Uh, they are talented on paper. Going to start at 15 with them, but a very complete roster. So I love that about, about the Browns. 14, the Rams. Uh, that you know, they actually probably moved down a little bit for me. Uh, you know, trading Ernest Jones because that was one of their better defensive players, especially without Aaron Donald in there. And they'll survive without him, of course. But they take a little bit of a hit. No Aaron Donald, no Ernest Jones. Some young guys got to step up without Aaron Donald helping them out in there. Uh, got to stay healthy in the second. I worry about the defense a little bit. You know, guys will step up, but I worry about the defense a little bit. Offensively, they should be super explosive. They got to stay healthy. Offensive line, Cooper Cup, Matt Stafford. Running game should be pretty strong. Kyron Williams, another one, got to stay healthy. But offense will be explosive. Defense, a little worried about it. It's not going to be the, nowhere near the worst in football, but a little worried about it. They're going to start at 14, mainly because it's a well-coached, experienced team with an explosive offense. 13, Atlanta Falcons, a team I think could climb. I think they're, they're going to start here. Let's see if they can grow some chemistry. Everything feels new for them right now, but for the better. But I think they're going to climb. they got a somewhat of an easier schedule. I wouldn't say easy, but it's a favorable schedule. Uh, they got a lot better. It's a pretty complete roster. There's really not too many holes. Uh, I mean, you wish they had more of an edge presence besides Judon, but there's really not too many holes here with this team. So they can continue to grow and grow and be a legit threat in the NFC. Number 12, going to be the Dallas Cowboys. On paper, they got they did get a little worse. And Deron Bland is out for the start of the year. That played a part in this ranking. But they're still going to be very explosive. They're always dominant in the playoffs. I mean, they're always, excuse me, they're always dominant in the regular season, but not in the playoffs. Uh, but regular season rankings here you know Dak's gonna be really good all the way through the regular season and uh, cd lamb as well running game a little bit of a question not worry about the offense line's gonna be fine and then defensively we'll see how it do- does under mike zimmer there that's gonna be interesting uh they start at 12 11 the miami dolphins are gonna be explosive they always start pretty hot so i think they can kind of continue to climb um, right off the bat, possibly. I do worry about the offensive line a little bit, worry about them staying healthy, but going to be very explosive. I like what they did with the secondary and then some injuries to start the year at the uh, at the edge position. But uh, they're going to they're gonna start at 11. At number 10, it's going to be the Philadelphia Eagles. On paper, on paper, it feels like they're better than this. Still in the back of my mind where they ended things. You know, they got to play, they gotta actually got to play up to how they look on paper. That would be huge for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, but they have a chance of being very good. But how? Let's, let's see the jump they make. I want to see it right off the bat. They play the Packers right away. That's going to be a big-time game. Cowboys-Browns, didn't mention that one. That's going to be a big-time game uh, as well. Number nine is the Buffalo Bills. Matt Milano being out, they take a hit because of that. The defense definitely takes a hit. It's the most important player on that defense, believe it or not. But... You know, no more digs, but I, I still think Josh Allen will have those boys balling. You know, they're going to play. They're going to play fast, physical. They're, they're still going to be a solid offense. How will they be right away without digs? I definitely, I don't actually, I believe they're not really going to miss them that much down the stretch. Maybe right, maybe right away a little bit. But again, defense, worry about that a little bit. Not that it's going to be bad, but without uh, Matt Milano. Number eight, the New York Jets. I mean, they're healthy today. When If this team's healthy, it's really, really good team. It's really good on paper. So right now, uh, they're looking like a really solid team. Like even if Rodgers isn't prime, Aaron Rodgers, it doesn't. He doesn't need to be. This is a very, very complete team. Maybe, maybe the most complete roster in football. It's debatable. It's definitely up there. Um, so they're gonna start off. They're gonna start off at eight. Should be an interesting game with them and the 49ers on Monday night in Week One. Number seven, the Bengals. They're healthy right now. I mean, they got elite talent everywhere. Super explosive. Pretty balanced. Uh, worry about the interior defensive line a little bit stopping the run. They struggled with that last year. Um, and they were, when they were without reader and they are without reader, they get Rankins, but he's just not the same player in terms of stopping to run. Um, you know, so that's the only, really the only worry besides durability, but I picked them to win, uh, the AFC North. I love the schedule right today. I have the Ravens as a little, you know, today going into the year, the Ravens is a little bit better team than the Bengals. Uh, but I think the Bengals could catch them, uh, if they stay healthy because the talent that they have Ravens did lose a little bit. Look at the coaching staff, offensive line. Um, but to, you know, today I definitely think the Ravens are, are, you know, one of the better teams in football and they're going to come in at number six. 
they're going to be solid on both sides of the ball. They got talent on both sides of the ball. They're a pain in the ass to deal with. They add Derrick Henry. Just, yeah, losing those coaches and the offensive line. The offensive line worries me a little bit. It's I, If it stayed fully healthy all the way through, I think it would be fine. You kind of worry about the depth a little bit, and then maybe some starters are a little bit, a little bit uh, to be determined. But today they're a very, very good team, and they play, uh, and they will be all year, when they play the Chiefs in week one. Obviously, that's to open the year. Obviously, going to be a huge one. Five, the Houston Texans. And it's a team that can grow as the year goes on, and they start at number five just because it's a really good roster full of really good players, and they have a really good coaching staff. The defense is pretty complete. The only question is the interior defensive line, somewhere where they kind of, the only spot where they kind of got worse, it felt like. Uh, lost some guys, couldn't really add. Uh, but, I mean, the defense is loaded with talent. They add Daniel Hunter. Uh, you know, the other pieces, the secondary should be a playmaking secondary offensively. Stroud with those Stroud with those weapons, they had Joe Mixon. It's a very, very talented team. They're going to start at five. And it's a team I think will grow as the year goes on because they still have upside. And the Packers are in the same boat. The Packers, Texans, right in the same boat. Um, love C.J. Stroud. Both great already and growing. They both got running backs. Packers add Josh Jacobs. Both very solid offensive lines if healthy. Uh, you know, both have weapons. The Packers receivers are a little underrated. I think they got a bunch of guys that can ball out and get open and play. And defensively, the Packers, you know, got talent everywhere, and now they have a defensive coordinator to get that talent out of them. I think LaFleur is one of the better coaches in football as well. So Packers and Texans in the same boat. They're going to start high. You know, they're four or five in the same boat. They're going to start high, and they actually can grow. I have the Packers winning the Super Bowl this year. Uh, I just don't think they're the best team to start the year. I think they'll kind of get there. Detroit Lions at number three. Yeah, the Lions and Packers are going to have a battle this year. I did have the, my prediction at the end of the year. The Packers uh, winning that, and I have them winning the Super Bowl actually as well. But to start the year, and the Lions are the, still the better team, even though it's pretty close, very complete, always getting better, tough to deal with. They're going to punch you in the mouth. They're going to out-physical you. They're going to start as the number three team in football. Number two, the San Francisco 49ers. Not too much of a surprise here. One of the more complete best rosters in football, they got Ayuk back. They need Trent Williams out there for week one against the Jets. That would be huge. They need him. Offense line is a little bit of a question. It should be better than it was last year, but by how much? And again, they need Trent Williams out there for that to be valid. We'll see how somewhat new look defense is for the 49ers, but definitely one of the juggernauts of the league. And number one, who else but the defending Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs, well worthy of keeping that number one spot. Got the Baltimore Ravens in the opening game. That should be a fun one to rematch of the AFC Championship. But the Chiefs definitely suited to make a run to, you know, at that three-peat. Definitely possible for them to do that. I mean, they they lose Snead, but they got better at receiver, which was kind of their, their weak spot last year. And there's some young talent that they found. They're always good at finding it that could actually uh, elevate them even more. So no surprise there that they come in at number one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Who's too high? Who's too low to start? Uh, you know, who do you think will be climbing up as the year goes on? Love to hear your guys' thoughts. In-season content is now underway. Next video will be our picks video. Then my against the spread slash score predictions video. We have locks. We have a lot more. Always adding more. Cannot wait for the NFL to be back and kick off. That'll do it for this one. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.